Hey folks, our latest update is packed with new features and improvements to help you build even more flexible, accurate, and realistic financial plans. We've added support for inherited IRAs, easier tracking of cost basis, more accurate state and local tax modeling, and much, much more. Existing users will definitely want to watch to the end. First off, let's talk about inherited IRA. We've now added a new type, uh, inherited IRA. You'll be able to add that to your current finances by adding the new account. We also have uh, inherited Roth IRA as an option, but we'll use the traditional IRA for our example. You'll see here um, this dialog, you can click these dates and then you can set the original birth date of the owner and the death date of the owner. This will help determine the minimum withdrawal amount that will be used in your plan. And now we can, we'll go ahead and click over on, on one of our plans. We now see the inherited IRA show up linked to current finances. We'll click that, open up, go down to required minimum distributions. The minimum withdrawal method is default. So let's go take a look at how that works and save that. And now we'll see here, based on the settings of this IRA, we have a minimum distributions, RMDs starting here. We can go and look at taxable income, expand that panel, see the inherited IRA. So if we hover over here, we'll get to see a bunch of additional information explaining exactly how this is functioning. In our example, we're using a stretch IRA distribution based on life expectancy factor, uh, six years since the owner's passing and the beneficiary age. And we'll, we note here as well when we're using the pre-secure act rules or the secure 2.0 rules. If you have an inherited IRA, you're likely familiar with these details. So you should be able to use this panel to confirm the inherited IRA is configured correctly. Cost basis is now defined in a much more convenient way. If we go over to current finances again, we'll see uh, cost appearing here, and it's a, a, in, a, in a fixed dollar amount. Instead of having to specify this per account in every plan, and as a percentage, you now just can specify this as a dollar amount, and you're going to see that on current finances. Uh, similarly, you see this contribution amount for any Roth accounts, so this, this would be used to determine your uh, penalty-free withdrawal amount uh, prior to retirement age, so you can also modify these uh, here as well. If you're an existing user coming in from before 4.3, all of your accounts, the cost base will be migrated into current finances. So you'll likely want to go through and sort of double check that these conversions are accurate now. There's a, also a chance you may not have noticed that the cost base was even a field before. So we're hoping this is going to be much more apparent and available for you here on their current finances. Also, we have significantly revised our state and local tax calculations. So let's go look at tax settings for US residents. Uh, we have estimate for me selected here. In this case, we have, uh, you know, we're currently looking at Florida. That's not gonna be too interesting a case since they don't have any state taxes. So let's go ahead and let's change this to New York City or no, New York in particular. And then uh, under, under net now, you'll see this locality option appear. Um, if you're a New York City resident, you can now select that. That'll apply uh, New York City's uh, income tax to all eligible income sources. And then you can confirm all of this by going to tax analytics and you can select, uh, you know, select a given year and select your, your income uh, bands. And you'll see here the, the different uh, local income tax in this case, which, which would be New York City uh, income tax on top of the New York income tax, which is the state income tax. So those are all appearing there. And then you will see here all the uh, even federal income taxes is uh, is coming in here as well at the at the higher bands. But let's take a look at uh, a couple other states. So if we go to uh, say we go to Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania is kind of a a special case. Um, we have uh, we have a few different options here. Maybe you live in Philadelphia. Um, if one of the one of the higher local rates, and then if we look at tax analytics again, uh, we're going to see here uh, we're going to see here that that local income tax that three point seven five percent appear here on all wage income in particular, uh, but we won't see that local tax on other income sources. So this is this is accurate for that jurisdiction, and uh, many jurisdictions actually fall into this uh, category where the local income tax only applies to wages um, and and usually self employment income. So so those uh, those should now be re represented accurately. Accurately. And and then one final thing here, uh, ordinary income tax. Again, uh, you have a few options here. You know, you, you may live in a state that does have some local taxes in certain jurisdictions. Maybe you don't live in one of those, uh, or if yours isn't isn't represented, you can always use the custom option here to define your local income tax rate, or select none if you live in a county that does not have a local income tax.
So in addition to the local income tax settings, we've also done quite a bit in terms of treatment for retirement income. So there are a lot of state-specific rules for treatment of retirement income. We have captured uh, all the states that don't tax Social Security. So those are all now accounted for. And then it goes beyond that. There are additional states where uh, certain pension income types. Uh, so if you have created an income type of pension and you live in a state that, that should exempt state or local taxes from those income sources, then that should now be represented. There still could be some corner cases or, or narrow edge cases that are not accounted for, but for the most part, we have addressed the vast majority of them. So one thing to consider is if you ha are someone who has made some manual adjustments to taxes, perhaps you've used tax deduction, uh, tax credit, some of those uh, may need to go away now, which is you know good news, fewer things to maintain. But if you do still need uh, tax deductions, we have actually expanded the functionality here as well. So now you have the option to specify if the deduction, uh, you know, at what level they apply, so federal, state, or local, or, or you know, you can select all of them. This is a multi multi selection, so you can do that if you like, and then apply and, and create your sort of customization more narrowly uh, if if you need to. One last uh, thing to highlight for our California users. So if you select your state of residence, California, you notice you won't have a locality, but what you will see now. Uh, by popular demand is the inclusion of the California SDI. So that is now being uh, being applied as well to uh, wage income, but as you'll see here, not other income types. We've introduced the new concept of monthly time ranges. So we can now specify an income stream starting in a certain month or ending in a certain month. Um, and there's some other implications of this change. So we had to revise some of our date types. Let's look at Ashley's retirement milestone. This now will appear as an at year 2040 milestone. In the past, this would have read as at age and then the age of the, of the participant. So what we're seeing now, we've simplified this. You think this is going to work a lot better for folks. So your existing at age milestones will be converted to at year milestones. But going forward, if you wish, you can then now change them to at date to get more uh, more specificity. For example, uh, we've got this at year milestone here at 2040, uh, which in this case, that's Ashley's retirement year. And the way it was defined originally, that meant Ashley would end employment the year before. Um, that's specified here by using the exclusive operator there. So if we if we close that, and we'll see uh, Ashley's income here is in in the final year. And then if we if we toggle forward, we'll see it's it's no longer there. Same as cash flow. We don't see Ashley's cash flow here at forty six, but at forty five we do. And now, though, if we if we wish, we can switch this uh, milestone to use uh, an at date type and go ahead and toggle this back to say October, September. Uh, and now we see over here, we now get that prorated amount, uh, partial year amount uh, appearing here. And before we dive into too many examples on uh, partial year uh, events, we need to talk about calendar year alignment. This is a pretty major change for any new users. You'll never probably know the difference, but Existing users need to understand what's what's happened here. If we go to account settings, and now you're going to see this new section called plans, and this is going to show year alignment calendar year. So this is a global setting that's going to tell all of your plans to use this calendar year alignment or what type of alignment to use. In this case, everyone's going to be migrated to calendar year, and this is going to be the system default. So instead of your plans automatically generating in a rolling year fashion, as they did in the past, uh, they'll now be uh, tied to the calendar year. So when you're visualizing any given year of the simulation, you'll be looking at a full calendar year. Now, if you're coming to us from Australia or UK, we also have your tax year alignment here as an option that you can you can select instead. You can also select custom if you have something very specific in mind. And these all effectively work the same way, except for rolling year, which works exactly how it used to, uh, how standard plans used to work prior to 4.3. Um, but we would strongly recommend folks try the calendar year alignment, and we'll dive into sort of the implications of that now. When we look at our plan again, so let's say, let's go ahead and look at the first year, um, and we hover over here, we see this year ends December 31st. In the past, this would have projected one year into the future in a rolling fashion. So the implication here is we are we are still looking at a effectively a partial year in the first year, depending on where we are. So right now, as of the time of this recording, um, we had about 
uh, 6.45 months left, right? So all of the vast majority of our uh, plan elements, our salary, our, you know, our income, our expenses, basically every aspect of the plan is effectively prorated down to that 6.45 month factor. But in a subsequent year, any year after the first year, uh, if we select select that, we'll again see. Now we're looking at 2026. We're seeing full full year figures, so you know, nice round numbers. What we would expect to see based on our plan inputs. So for any year other than the first year, things will look very similar, except they'll now be actually aligned to your to your calendar year, whatever year alignment you choose. So the really important bits to understand occur in the first year. So let's go ahead and we're going to select 2025 again. So now we're looking at change in net worth. We showed here this a second ago, we've got this additional note that pops up when we're on our first year, right? If we're on 2026, this goes away because there's no proration happening in, in future years. So 2025, we have, we have our proration here, well described. What we're seeing here is the effect of continuous income events and expense events. So for example, you know, we open up Ashley's again, and we know Ashley's going to be ending her, her salary at retirement. We talked about that, how we can now specify that to the, to a specific month. And that's on, that's going to be determined by the ending date, but the start date in this case is defined as before current year. So everything that you previously had in your plan, or if you're, if you're new, any item you create by default will use uh, before current year as the value, uh, unless you're using, unless you're creating a one-time event, and we'll, we'll show those in a minute. But for the most part, you're going to have everything as a before current year as a starting condition. But if you choose to, you can make a you can make an event start at some point in the year. So for example, we're currently you know currently in June, but if I change this this event to be starting, you know, to start in September, uh, then we would see a, a very different behavior here. So we'll go ahead and save that. We're seeing Ashley's salary prorated, and it's going to show exactly the amount that we would expect occurring from September on. So this amount here, the 28,333 is not being prorated by the, by this factor here at all. That's exactly four months worth of uh, salary at the rate of $85,000 a year. Similarly, say we had a bonus that we were going to receive at some point in the year. So say we had a, uh, a frequent, you know, a bonus being modeled as a one-off, uh, one-off event. So frequency once you can then, you'll then see uh, an option here to specify when it occurs. So we can specify again, uh, September, 2025, I'll go ahead and enable that so that it appears. And then we scroll down here in, t in the change in net worth, it appears as uh, $12,000. So this is still going to apply in the change in net worth from today to the end of the year. But what's key to know here is that change in net worth will show you the effect from today to the end of the year, because that's always what we're trying to project. Our, our, uh, our standard plan is projecting from your current balances, your current finances as your starting condition. But cash flow for the year will still show everything that either did happen or will happen in the year within this cash flow. So key things to know, it's going to remember the correct amount of tax withholding that occurred based on your settings. It, uh, whether or not the, the events have actually been applied to your, to your net worth or not. We have the prorated amount of Jordan salary. So we're showing 85,000 here, but if we go to change in net worth, uh, we're only going to see f uh, 45,000 remaining, right? But for, and, and for, for Ashley's salary, we're going to see actually the full amount because it hasn't started yet in our model, right? We've, we've said that Ashley's going to start work uh, later in the year. And this bonus is also happening later in the year. So these amounts will match uh, exactly because they represent amounts that either not been received because they're one-off events that are happening in the future, or they're partial year events, but they haven't started yet. And sort of to kind of tie it all together with this example, imagine this was a bonus you actually already received. So it you don't want it to affect your cash flow anymore because it's already represented in your balances, right? In your savings account or wherever you've invested the money. So we're going to modify this one to say that it happened in April. Again, we're in June at the time of this recording. So this is in the past for us. So now you'll see change in net worth. Oh, bonus still appears. It's going to appear as, as zero dollars because it's already, it's already occurred. But again... We go to cash flow it will still appear here if you had any tax withholding that's still accounted for so what's important about the tax withholding projection lab keeps track of 
how much was withheld or projected to be withheld. And then it's going to actually calculate your an estimate for your tax bill, right? So it's going to use all of your income when it's trying to estimate your tax bill. And then at the end of the year, or really at the beginning of the following year, things have to be settled up. So if we scroll forward one year, now we're seeing, oh, we're actually due a tax refund from last year based on the way we defined our, our income and our tax withholdings. If you'd under withheld, um, you would actually see an expense appear here. In this case, we've, uh, we've over withheld uh, at least an estimated uh, $9,000. Similar to cash flow, if you look at tax analytics in a given year, again, you're going to see everything that either has happened or is projected to happen within the year. So this is this is going to be a full year view, uh, just like cash flow. So the only place where you're going to see the true sort of partial year amounts that are occurring from today into the end of the first year is in change in net worth. If you're trying to figure out what's going to happen from today to the end of your plan and how that'll affect net worth, this is where you're going to want to look. Talked about income a fair amount. This also applies to expenses, real assets, even cash flow priorities. So with real assets, it can be pretty useful if you want to set a specific sale month or purchase month for a home. Uh, you you can now do that, and you know appropriately any expenses you have tied to the home will start and stop uh, you know at a specific month. So in the past, uh, folks had to use fixed date plans, uh, which are still available now, but we, we, are, um, we are trying to sort of de-emphasize them. And uh, we think that the new standard plan with calendar year alignment will solve a lot, of, uh, a lot of the use cases for fixed date plans and then allow folks to still use uh, a plan that projects from current finances. So we've, uh, we have an example here. So if you do have a fixed date plan, I just kind of want to walk through how you might, uh, might go about uh, converting over to a standard plan. So, so we have a fixed date plan version of our example. So you'll notice, you know, of course it has its own starting conditions that have to be maintained separately, which can be a lot of extra work. So, so what you can do instead is we'll create a new plan and you're going to, and I've already got one here, but so I'm just going to show you here where it is, where to click through the menu. So we're going to copy, we're going to use a, a copy of the fixed date plan. Now, bef but before you can create that plan, you're going to need to show those advanced settings and then select a now to, to convert it to the standard, uh, standard plan type and also select today as the starting conditions. And then give it a name and, and go from there. So I already have, have my copy made over here, so I'm just going to open it up. And in this case, there might be a few few differences, a few things that need to be need to be rectified. But uh, if your fixed date plan matches up uh, with your current finances accounts, you should have uh, probably l very little work to do, uh, but you will want to kind of go through and review it. So just to recap uh, the benefits of the calendar year alignment, um, we think uh, we think it's going to be a great help for folks uh, who want to do any kind of tax planning, since now you'll be able to align to your tax year. Your events and milestones that are tied to age will no longer essentially shift around. Um, with the rolling year, you would be subject to you know the time of year plus the you know your birth date when figuring out when events would appear in the plan. So now everything will be tied to a calendar year and it'll be fixed. The first year accuracy is I think a pretty pretty major improvement. So you now get to model more precisely uh, events that have partially occurred or have, have occurred in the past, uh, but you know, applying, to, but still keeping track of it for current year calculations and for things like taxes. And by consequence, tax uh, withholdings are, are now more accurate. So any any income you've received prior to today within the calendar year will you know will still be factoring in the tax withholding for those amounts. Uh, so we think those those all, all kind of come together to make some some pretty nice improvements. So we hope to get, have your feedback on that. If you have any questions about any of these things we talked about, uh, Discord's a great place to come. We'll link the Discord, and we'll also link the the full change log, which is much bigger than what we talked about. There's a lot of, there are a lot of details, but we did cover the major features. Yeah, we appreciate you taking the time to watch and listen to this video. If you have any questions, we'd love to see you on Discord. Bye.